Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the BlueSmart S5B 3-axis stabilized gimbal. This is a um, gimbal for your smartphone that will stabilize it when recording film and pictures. Very great product, and thank you so much, BlueSmart, for giving me this opportunity to review this. So, let's get into the video. So, let's unbox this S5B gimbal and see how well it is. So, this was $80 on Amazon. We may be able to get it for less, but that's how much it normally is. There's a carrying case in the shape of a gimbal and some other compartments. There is also some other paper goods inside. There's a customer service um, paper. There's an instruction manual. And there's the carrying case with the actual gimbal inside of it. But before we look at that, let's look at some of what the box says about its features and um, things that it may come with. So, on the front, there's a picture of it with the smartphone intact. Um, there's some item details, Blue Smart. On the side, it talks about horizontal and vertical mode. And you can do panoramas with it. There's an adjustable arm, up to 12 hours of runtime, which is pretty good, I think. It shows the various um, different parts of the gimbal and tells them what they are can tell how many um, degrees it can go by tilting, panning, rolling, etc. Um, payload weight and support smartphone and various other things about it. Technical de details if you will. On the side again it tells some more features. Uh, face tracking, manual zooming, time lapse, and real time charging. And by real time charging that means you can charge your phone and use it at the same time. You can also charge the gimbal and use it at the same time, although that I wouldn't recommend that. Not very um, easy in that regard. So now that we've gotten through that, let's actually open the box and see what um, all came in this carrying case. So this carrying case, though, for starters, is interesting in the fact that it's just the shape of the gimbal and the products, besides it being a rectangle. It might have been nice if they could have just made it all one rectangle but it doesn't really matter opening it up and here's our beautiful gimbal and some other things so to start off with here's the charging cable USB type A to micro USB that is what will charge your um, actual gimbal it's nice it's a rechargeable battery and not um, disposable ones here's a tripod attachment that you can attach to the bottom of your um, gimbal if you just want to have it set up um, and then have it track somebody's face around I guess that's a nice thing to have here's a loop that you can put your wrist in and attach this to the actual um, gimbal so you won't drop it as likely and keep a good um, secure hold on it and here is the actual gimbal so this will take some getting used to using it unless you've had experience before I've had this for about a week now and only just now am I um, actually making a video about it it takes time like I said, to get used to, to get um, used to its features and how to properly use it because at first it wasn't working properly. It would change modes and I'll tell you more about that later but just remember that if it doesn't seem to work right off the bat just give it some time. So to go over the actual quality and feel of this product. It feels fairly nice. It's not cheap feeling. It's fairly heavy. Um, not too heavy though. It's fairly light. It's plastic with some foam for the grips. There's some metal here and there, I think. Um, there's nice decal on the side, Blue Smart. There's controls on the back, on the front. There's also kind of like grips on both sides. So overall, pretty good quality, I'd say. Mostly plastic, but it feels pretty nicely made. It feels very nice, actually. It's not super light, it's not super heavy, just the right um, perfect weight, I'd say. Obviously, you have your tilt, your roll, and your panning so we'll explain more about that later but overall the feel and the build and the make of this the quality is pretty good I'd say I like it um, you may need to adjust some things to get it to work properly there's some knobs you need to adjust um, to get the phone in it's pretty it's pretty tight so be careful with that um, kind of tricky but make sure your phone doesn't fall out so build quality and so forth I'd say it's pretty good I like it I like it a lot actually So now let's actually get to the features and testing of this. This is going to be more of the complex part. Um, this has been one of the more complicated th um, products to review so far for me because it can do several things. How you actually set it up though is 
pull this thing out and then just move it so that it looks like this if you want to do horizontal. Then you stick your phone in, make sure you get it flush with the plastic so that it's like this. It should look like this. Right now I'm recording audio with it, but right now it should be in this position if you're doing horizontal. You can also do vertical, but I'm just going to be explaining horizontal in this video for now. So right now it's not off, and as you can see the phone just dangles around. That's why it has to be electronic and have batteries. It just dangles around and floats around um, haphazardly. So to turn it on there's a power button. You hold that for three seconds or till all the lights blink on and they'll start blinking and they'll go to which mode. There's three modes and I'll explain that later but as you can see this is what a gimbal really is like. It balances for you and as you saw before it was flopping all over the place. Now it is stabilizing. It follows my hand movements and it stays level. I can go up and down if I tilt like this, it also changes the camera view, down. So left and right, up and down, forwards and backwards, it changes. Now, as you just saw, it just dangled um, out of position. This is a problem I've been having with this, and I've kind of disappointed in that regard. So what I've done is I've taken the case off, and I've noticed that I've had more success with that, without it. So. I'll be taking the case off. And to turn it off, you hold it for three seconds or so, or until it all disappear, all the lights disappear. So I'm going to take this case off. You may not have to, but it's what works the best. If you're having problems like I was, switching out of modes, then you'll want to take it out of its case. So stick it back in, make sure it's flush with the end. You see, put it back in this position, turn it back on until all the lights are shown on the right side of the joystick. And then back to how it was before and it should not um, exit the modes without you telling it. It's pretty smooth. I like them. I like this product a lot. It's frustrating me when it hasn't worked but I've gotten to know it better. So like I said up and down left to right both do different things. Tilting is when the phone leans inward like this or leans outward. Maybe kind of hard to visualize but that's what it is. Panorama is going left to right, and roll is when you move the handle in and out, but it stays level. So that's basically an overview of what each axis is for. Tilting is for like leaning your head back and forward. Panning is side to side, and rolling is when the rest of your body moves, you stay in the same position. Maybe that will help you visualize better, but that's anyway how you turn it on, how you install it, and how you um, use it with the first mode which is AF abbreviated. This mode is pan and tilt follow mode. So, so the camera pan and tilt follow your hand movements and they're unlocked so to speak and the roll is locked so that it won't follow your movements. It stay, makes the phone stay level but panning it follows your hand movement and tilting it follows your hand movements. So that's the first mode which is abbreviated AF on the right side of your joystick which it automatically boots to. The next mode is HF, which is pan following mode. Tilt and roll are locked. Pan axis rotates smoothly with turn of wrist, so tilt and roll are locked, but pan is um, still available, which I'll move into that mode. And how you do that is you just press the power button once, you don't hold it, and now it's in that mode. That shouldn't be following tilt uh, with my hand motions, it just stays level, but it will follow panning. It may be kind of confusing at first but you'll get it more as you go on. It just went um, weightless, so to speak. Kind of got out of position. Um, it jumped out of the mode, so that's disappointing. I don't like that it's doing that sometimes. I'll restart it to get it back into position. Back into HF mode, so tilt and roll are locked, but panning still works. It still follows your hand movements. The other two are not. It just keeps it level, so that's what that mode is. The last mode is LF, and the manual says all three axes are locked. The camera keeps still and stable, which means the camera cannot follow movements of handle. So it just stays level. It stays in its position, but you can move it around, and it'll be in its position. Uh, it doesn't follow your hand movements as far as moving the camera. So that's that last mode. It may be kind of hard to understand when I explain these things, but you'll get it more as you um, test it out yourself. 
you'll get your experience firsthand is what will really help you um, learn about this. So I'm going to turn this off and explain the controls. Now that we understand the modes, you can test them out for yourself if you get this product. That really is what will help you get used to using this. Because it's hard to explain what pan, follow, tilt, all those modes do, but once you get the hang of using it, um, you'll understand better and just using it for yourself, you'll kind of figure out what they mean. But like I said, let's explain the controls and the controls are you got this joystick that um, can move your camera in any mode, tilt, pan, so in any mode you can use a joystick to tilt and pan um, without hand movements. So if you're in the LF mode, which all the axes are locked, it just keeps it stable um, wherever you move your hand. You can use this to change the camera um, direction, so that's awesome. On the left side of the joystick, there are the HML and there's lights next to all of them. That will show your battery level. Above the joystick there's a light um, and it has a chain link under that. It's talking about Bluetooth connection. And you'll want to go to settings and tap on what appears when you turn on this um, gimbal. You'll want to connect it and from then on every time you turn it on it should connect if your Bluetooth's on. That will enable it to do better use of the controls. On the right side of the joystick is the modes I was talking about AF, HF, and LF. And just to go over them quickly again, AF um, you can pan and tilt, it follows your hand movements. Um, the roll axis is locked, but it keeps it stable, plus you, it follows your tilt movements and panning movements. The HF, um, tilt and roll are both locked, so it just follows your pan and keeps it stable. The LF, finally, all the axes are locked, it just keeps it stable. That's where this joystick will be most useful in, although you got to be careful how much you move it because the gimbal seems to jump out of its mode and the lights start flashing and the phone goes limpless and dangles around. I'm not sure all about that. I'll have to email um, Blue Smart support or something to figure out and learn more about this. This control over here um, is a dial, kind of like on a iPod click wheel. You just move it and that should be zoom. It may not work in the default camera app. They make an app themselves. I'll explain more later. And then this is the power button that turns it on. You have to hold it pressing it once also changes modes pressing it twice puts the camera back to its original position when you turned it on so to the back of the device you got this button this is like basically a shutter button anyway this starts recording and starts taking pictures above that you have your charging port for charging your phone while you use this if you want you can put your USB type A um, cable in right here and then have your cord plugged into your phone now some people won't be able to do that because your charging port is obviously at the bottom so you not everyone will be able to do that and then on the side you have your USB type C which you can charge your actual gimbal with so that's right there so that's basically an overview of the stuff and controls on the actual gimbal so kinda complicated to explain kinda complicated to understand you'll get more as you use it if you decide to buy this Obviously read the manual, read the whole manual. Sometimes it's um, easy just to say, I want to do this on my own, um, I can figure it out. Well, you need to read this because you don't understand unless you try, unless you've had a lot of experience with gimbals and such forth. So please read that. I'm going to explain these um, knobs that you can rotate. There's one behind the phone clip, which that makes it so you can change from vertical into horizontal modes. Um, it talks about horizontal mode. I'm not going to explain it in this video. In this manual, it talks about how you can have the phone facing up and down like this, or I should say like this, so that you can record video like that. The uh, manual explains that. But anyway, that's how you do that. Um, over here, there's a knob. You may not be able to see it very well, but this makes it so you can adjust this unit right here, this whole unit my hand is covering, up and down. So. When I got this, it was it would scrape the bottom of um, this piece right here, so I had to adjust it so it wouldn't do that. Now it's perfectly free. It doesn't hit anything, so you might need to do that as well. So there's the functions and features of this thing. They also make an app which you can download. It's called Gimbal Pro. It's available for free on the iOS App Store and it should be on the Android App Store too. Here's Gimbal Pro, it has a picture of a gimbal plus a camera. Turn on your gimbal, press find device, and then press stabilizer. So here is the actual app. 
there's various functions that can do face um, tracking, various different functions. You can zoom with the dial now. It has more flexibility than the actual camera app that's stock on your iPhone. So that's that for the app. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I might explain more in the future. That's how you access more of the features that come with this gimbal. Okay, so now let's give an overview of this gimbal. Um, overall, I really love it. Um, maybe I should rephrase that to I really like it. Um, I'm disappointed with how it acts sometimes. Like it exits the mode and then goes limp and dangles around. That's very inconvenient. Maybe I can learn more about how to prevent that from happening. Um, overall though, I like this gimbal. The quality of the build and the quality of the build is very good. Uh, feels good. Um, it's not too heavy, not too light. It just makes me think of good quality for the most part. Um, I like the features that it has. Um, I like that it has an app that you can track faces and do various other things with. So I like the feature set. I like the build quality. Um, I like the gimbal overall. Just disappointed how it exits the modes. So the price, um, it should be cheaper, I think. It's not worth eighty dollars or so if um, it exits modes and it's really hard to learn or hard harder to learn than some things so yes cheaper but overall I still like the product and I've had fun using it when it's been working correctly be sure to rewatch the skateboarding video um, to get a feel of what it does and what it looks like but overall I like this product just disappointed in the exiting of modes but like I said build quality and feature set is great price and how it exits modes should be fixed a little better. But anyway, thank you so much to Blue Snort for um, giving me the opportunity to make this video. I I appreciate the product. I like it. Just wish um, it could have some improvements. But other than that, it's a good product. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, please leave a like. Comment down below what you think of this product, this video, um, this review, etc. Tell me what else I should review in the future or what I should improve on. And please subscribe if you thought this video was helpful or you like my content and encourages me to make and continue to produce more video. Like I said, please comment, um, let me know how to improve, and I'd be happy to improve. So, thanks again guys so much for the 200 subs. Goodbye.